Hello, my name is George Phillip. This is my final reflection uh, podcast or vlog uh, video podcast for my uh, EdTech 533 YouTube and education class. Uh, so today we're going to uh, discuss five uh, questions that um, our professor wanted us to um, answer in terms of how we thought the class went and, and what we learned and things of that nature. Uh, so question number one, uh, what were the most important things that I learned this semester? Uh, I say the most important thing that I learned is uh, captioning uh, for videos. And while this video won't have captioning because my first one failed and it is uh, 30 minutes before the deadline that this is due, um, that captioning is extremely important uh, when it comes to using video and education. And the main reason uh, I find is that we as educators need to uh, make sure that all learners can learn from us. Uh, that point was really driven home to me uh, a few weeks ago when on Twitter Paul Anderson uh, posted something, uh, just kind of like a question, and like a YouTube link. And so I, I watched the video and it was... Uh, this reporter following around this young African male who uh, was dumb, couldn't speak, uh, mainly because he was uh, deaf. And so, uh, you know, followed him and he you know, eventually went to this meeting where um, he, he learned how to sign. And so for the first time in his entire life, you know, this 18-year-old boy was able to communicate with his father through words and, and language. Uh, so I thought that was powerful uh, in that, you know, realizing that we as educators need to make sure that we have things such as um, closed captioning and videos so that people who might not be able to hear can read our words and, and still learn from us um, for those same reasons. Uh, so the second question was, how has my opinion of YouTube and education changed or remained the same? Uh, it hasn't changed at all. It's it's remained the same as for us from uh, as was demonstrated in my first um, vlog about the course. It's an extremely powerful tool, uh, and again, you know, I use it constantly in my class to either um, uh, make videos to push direct instruction outside of the classroom, so that in the classroom we can uh, be more creative uh, with our time together or whether it is um, using pieces of video to spark inquiry, uh, to spark curiosity, to engage my students in, in other ways that may not have been the same as if I just gave them text to read, or you know, gave them uh, if we did popcorn in the classroom, some reading, something along those, along, along those lines. Uh, so again, it's a very powerful tool if it's harnessed in the proper way. Um, you know, if you're just going on there to find videos to show in your class and you have your class watch those videos and then, you know, answer questions on them, that's a fine way to use it. However, you know, if you're looking at like the SAMR model, that's the S, you know, it's just something that's just supplementing a different video that you already had. Um, I think it can be used for so much more than, than that. Um, question number three is, how has my teaching or thoughts about teaching impacted by what I learned or experienced this semester. Uh, and again, um, you know, it hasn't really changed, it hasn't impacted what I've done. I've already done things of this nature uh, before in my classroom. What it will have impacted though uh, is how I teach this to other teachers. Uh, I am currently uh, director of technology integration on top of my teaching duties as well and so with that it's it's my job to train my staff on different technologies uh, I feel that I could leverage the power of YouTube uh, in that you know teach them how uh, they create playlists and find those sparks of inquiry and make these playlists uh, to have uh, an organized system for themselves so that when it comes to that time they can go and watch those and that's something then also too you know not just using YouTube for consumption but also YouTube for creation having the kids create something using our school YouTube channels 
um, to make playlists on those to share with parents as well so the parents can see what's going on in the classroom so we can be more transparent about what we do um, you know just ideas and things along those natures is, is, is what I'll be um, taking to my faculty you know, you know, question number four, will I use project skills or ideas from this course in my teaching and training? Yeah, again, I, I kind of already addressed that in the last question. Um, but also, too, you know, a lot of my, um, one of the projects we could have done was a green screen. Uh, I chose not to do the green screen. Uh, but I know a lot of my fellow faculty want to know how to do the green screening. Uh, so with various apps and stuff that are out there, uh, you know, it'd be very easy and simple um, to help teach them how to do that. I can run a professional workshop based off that uh, stop animation. You know, I can teach the teachers how to do that so that their kids could have an experience with that. Uh, or, you know, um, stop animation films. Um, so, I mean, another idea that I had for, uh, instead of giving my students a test over Greece and Rome, was having them create their own uh, vlog uh, on you know, based off of five or six questions, based on something along the same lines, and also, uh, you know, for the end of the year, have them reflect upon the year. You know, what did they learn? What didn't they learn? What did they like? You know, just just some questions about that, or maybe even give them a few different learning standards that we addressed, and having them answer those questions, and then showing the students the following year what the previous year's students thought of the course and what they thought needed to be changed and I can use that as well to help um, alter you know how I'm teaching what I'm teaching to, to make sure that uh, this is successful and what I'm doing is successful so the pr three projects that I chose uh, for the final question to demonstrate my mastery of the AEC AECT standards are the first one was my um, initial vlog uh, reflection uh, the second one is my PowerPoint uh, movie presentation. And then my third one is the uh, sorry, it's late. Um, the third one is the uh, linked annotated uh, videos. Uh, and I believe all three of those demonstrate my mastery. Uh, one because, um, all of them show how I was able to demonstrate uh, creating and uh, using um, the different standards. So, uh, for instance, uh, standard one talks about how um, I was able to, all of them actually hit on standards one, two, three, and uh, four. And so standard one talks about uh, demonstrating knowledge and necessary to create, use, assess, and manage theoretical and practical applications of educational technologies and processes. Uh, so with all three of them, uh, I did a lot of creating my own uh, instructional materials to help my students learn or to help uh, other teachers learn. Uh, in my PowerPoint and in uh, the last last one they were both designed to one was to teach a uh, new pedagogical um, teaching style explore flip apply uh, and the third one was a tutorial for Google Classroom uh, which is a new tool that's out there um, and so in all three of my videos I talk about how teachers can create something new I also teach about how they can use it um, I also talk about how they can uh, then evaluate the effective use uh, of that in their classroom and then also everything that I did was uh, within Creative Commons license uh, so you know the ethics part of standard one uh, is addressed with that um, content pedagogy standard two says candidates develop as reflective practitioners able to demonstrate effective implementation of educational technologies and processes based on contemporary content and pedagogy. Um, so again, you know, creating something that fits within the realm of what this course was, and it was developing materials for our YouTube channels to help 
teach either our students or somebody else uh, within our field. And all three of those projects do that. All three of them are using the appropriate content pedagogies of um, making sure that they're not you know, too long in length, especially if you work with middle schoolers. Uh, the videos, if you do, do flip videos, they should be short. Adult has a bit more of a longer attention span, so the videos could be longer. Um, but making sure that it's falling within that time, and then also that the instruction and implementation of what the technologies we're using uh, are appropriate uh, and grounded in reflective practice, which is you know the purpose of this um, and the purpose of any project that you do. You should always outline it first and, and then go with it. Uh, standard three talks about uh, facilitating learning by creating, using, evaluating, and managing effective learning environments. Uh, and so all three of those do, all three of them, the reflective video, the PowerPoint video, and the um, linked annotation video, uh, all get at creating uh, different instructional designs um, that are research-based. Also, um, you know, using um, professional decisions in what I've done. Um, you know, Google Classroom is a new tool that's out there and it's probably going to stay there for a while, and I think Google stays for quite a while. Uh, Explore Flip Apply is uh, a method developed about six or seven years ago. It's based on principles from the 1970s. Uh, so it's it's there, it's been there, It's will always remain there. Our kids always need to be inquisitive. Uh, if they're stopping inquisitive, then we're in trouble. Uh, and then lastly, the last um, the last standard uh, standard four uh, is where we design, develop, and implement an effective teaching rich, technology rich uh, learning environment with a supportive community of practice. And that's what this class is. This class is creating that community of practice uh, where we reflect upon with each other. We get comments all the time uh, on our videos and just being able to take that and work it into the next one. So, I bid you all farewell. I hope your journeys in the EdTech program are great. And uh, this is my last vodcast for the EdTech program as I am graduating uh, this month. So, enjoy the ride, guys.